Hello everyone. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to listen to some jackass on YouTube rant and rave about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Directed by Christopher McQuarrie and starring Tom Cruise, Haley Atwell, and Isai Morales. An experimental artificial intelligence has gone rogue and possibly gained sentience, which, if you know your science fiction, is never a good thing. The IMF recognizes how dangerous such a thing is, and they intend to destroy it. That won't be easy, as virtually every government on Earth, including their own, wants to gain control of the AI for themselves. The AI, referred to throughout the movie as the Entity, has enlisted the help of a man named Gabriel. Gabriel had a run-in with Ethan Hunt many years ago, and the details of their encounter are a bit vague, but suffice to say, they did not part on good terms. And so it's up to the IMF to find a way to stop an AI that can basically infiltrate any system that is online. This is the Seventh Mission Impossible movie, which is a pretty reliably good action series. Tom Cruise's shitty behavior notwithstanding. Personally, I thought the first movie was fine, the second movie kinda sucked, and the third was when the series really hit its stride, and they've pretty much been firing on all cylinders ever since. This movie is part one of two, and it's about two hours and 45 minutes just on its own. I don't know that it necessarily needed to be 2.45, but honestly, I was never bored. Tom Cruise, Rebecca Ferguson, Ving Rhames, and Simon Pegg all came back for this one. All solid performers, and these are characters they all know very well at this point. Although, gun to my head, I don't know if I can really remember any of their names apart from Ethan, because the series just happens to be built around him. And really, the characters are not meant to be the focus. The focus is on the international spy story, and the death-defying stunts, and Tom Cruise running a lot. And the running has almost become a joke at this point. Every movie, you're just waiting for that scene to happen. And yep, here it is. Yeah, and Tom Cruise is off. There he goes. He is running like the wind. And still running. Still running. He has definitely been hitting the treadmill. Um... Cut. The most interesting character, I thought, was Grace, played by the immensely talented Haley Atwell. She plays a cunning and confident thief who reluctantly ends up working with Ethan and the IMF. And overall, I really liked her in this movie. I just wish they had given her a bit more to do towards the end. There's a point where Ethan and Grace are on a runaway train, and they have to separate so Ethan can go after Gabriel, and Grace can go and try to stop the train. And I'm wondering, hmm... How are they going to stop this runaway train? Sure is going to be interesting to see what clever plan she comes up with. And then when they finally meet up again, she's like, I couldn't stop the train. But what the hell was the point then? It's like they knew they had to separate the two so Ethan could go have his one-on-one -on -one with Gabriel, but then they couldn't think of anything for her to do, so she just kind of waited there for Ethan to get back. It was weird. I suppose the true villain of this story is the Entity itself, and it's interesting how it doesn't really have a proper name. It kind of reminds me of the Rabbit's Foot from Mission Impossible 3. I don't think they ever actually said what the Rabbit's Foot was supposed to be. It was just the Rabbit's Foot. That's it. Anyway, the Entity paints a very scary picture. This is something that can connect to virtually any online system and gain every bit of information about you that is floating out there on the interwebs and use it against you as leverage. And it can also potentially learn some very dangerous government secrets. And artificial intelligence, identity theft, hacking into dangerous government systems, these are all very real concerns in this day and age. Morales, I thought, did a pretty good job as Gabriel, the entity's representative, if you will. He is intelligent and ruthless and deadly and entirely too good at what he does. And he makes a very good foil for Ethan and the IMF. He is one step ahead of him the entire goddamn time. And he does have some sort of a past with Ethan, although the details are a little scarce, and I also wasn't entirely clear on what exactly convinced him to work with the Entity in the first place, but they may be saving something for part two. This movie also features Palm Clementieff as Gabriel's assassin, Paris. Yes, the French girl's name is Paris. How creative. And I think it's safe to say that she enjoys her work a little too much. I mean, oh, she is frightening. Clementiev never leaves a doubt in your mind that this bitch is completely crazy and will kill you without a second's thought. And after seeing her in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, it is really weird seeing her normal face. Like, I almost didn't recognize her for a moment. Like, oh, right, that's what she looks like. 
Like the movies that came before it, Dead Reckoning Part 1 has some very elaborate action sequences that are a lot of fun, and Cruz continues to almost kill himself for our enjoyment. I'm sure you've all seen that big motorcycle jump off the cliff in the trailer, and I won't spoil it, but that sequence has an amazing ending. Macquarie is very good at creating these big action sequences, and this is his third Mission Impossible movie, so he ought to be good at it by this point. And I was pleasantly surprised at how much humor there was in this movie. The car chase especially was hilarious. Basically, Ethan and Grace have to do a getaway, and they're handcuffed at the time, and they're handcuffed the wrong way, so they have to kind of climb over each other to take control of the car. Very well done. Anyway, this is a long one. Like I said, it's 2 hours 45 minutes, and time will tell if this story really required two movies. But part one was a lot of fun, I enjoyed it very much, and I am looking forward to part two. And if you're a fan of the Mission Impossible series, this is definitely worth your time. And that's all I have to say about Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. This video will not self-destruct, because how would that even work? Until next time, take care.